Wow. What a beautiful morning here in Mozambique. This is it. Looks great. This is our first morning here, and uh, looks like the first thing we're gonna do this morning is uh, head out to the range and make sure this Ruger M77-416 uh, is ready and dialed in. Uh, test out this Trijicon scope, and uh, then we can proceed out and uh, make sure that uh, we've got our bait stations loaded with some pre-bait, and then we can get started with our lion hunt. That'll be the first thing of order, so let's get after it. I want to introduce you to Stoffel, our professional hunter. And I knew right off the bat this guy was a pro. Uh, been hunting in this, this area of Africa for a long time. And so that would really kind of calm my nerves. And I knew that I was going to have a professional hunter that, uh, that you know, you, you dream of on, on a type of safari like this. Stoffel, what do you think? What's the game plan this morning? Oh, we're going to shoot the, uh, start the rifles and just see if it can go straight off to the long trail, yeah. <laughs> Bad road in, but yeah. And from there, we'll just take it easier. So let's get started. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. All good. All right. Well, just like we always do on any type of hunting trip when you're flying with your rifle, is you want to come out and make sure this gun sighted in. Uh, not much of a bench gun, but Ruger's come out with a new model here. It's an M77 uh, in, the, in the caliber of a 416. So definitely what we need for our dangerous game in hunting a lion and leopard, Cape Buffalo. We're using a uh, Hornaday Dangerous Game Series round and like I say, a 416 Ruger. We've actually got the solids and the expandables. So we make a DGS model and a DGX model. So we're just gonna make sure this uh, gun's still sighted in. All right, fire in the hole. Right there, right above the bullseye. We were ready to go out and hunt. So we got going and we immediately started talking about uh, some of the animals that I wanted to uh, see on the safari and some of the trophies that I wanted to take. And the first thing that came about was an Inyala. And I had killed a mountain Inyala a year ago in Ethiopia, in Ethiopia. So I wanted to kill an Inyala. And Stoffel had said that I was in luck. And the reason I was in luck was because he had hunted this Inyala with another client for two weeks. And they did not kill this Inyala. His client could not get it done. And so it was my lucky day, or my lucky chance, to hunt this Inyala. He was a trophy in Yala, so it's exactly what I wanted to add to my collection. And you know what? We saw this in Yala about 300 yards away, and uh, he said, you know, there he is. So we uh, got out and pursued this uh, in Yala, and you know, he's a crafty individual. The uh, first couple of stalks we made were unsuccessful, but we did not give up. We kept after him, and he set me up on the shooting sticks a couple more times, and I was able to get a shot. Uh, off at this in Yala at about 320 yards and uh, in connected. Okay, I've got a bit of a history with this Nyala. Um, the previous line was looking for a specific Nyala. Mm -hmm. That was his main goal to get a Nyala. Mm -hmm. And he was on his last safari, he was 73 year old. I had him on a stick twice on this Nyala, specific Nyala bull. He just couldn't get a shot in there. And for about seven days, I saw him. Out of the seven days, we saw him at least four, four times. And some other Nyala bulls here and there. And then today, he was just, he presented himself. And he tried to outsmart us, but luckily you got him. Yeah, he did try to outsmart us. Uh, you know, I think uh, it's five different times we sat up on the sticks. Yeah. And uh, he evaded us, but uh, not for long. One down and many more to go. Yeah, lots more to go. Yeah. The afternoon of the first day was eventful as well. We ran into some zebras up on the hill a few hundred yards away. And I, I'd wanted a zebra for a long time. And we had a good opportunity with these zebra. And so I got out of the truck with Stoffel and we devised a plan and we pursued these zebra.
moved along, got into another window. He said, just sit right here on the sticks. These zebras should move right into the area and you should have a good shot. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you. A big old horse. Wow. Pretty animal. Beautiful markings. More line bait too. Yeah. <laughs> So you can tell this is a bigger cat because yeah. he's biting through the bone. Yeah. You can see that. He's tearing up that bone. And this big pieces of meat falling up. This is what we're here for. And uh, this is what it's all about. When you've got a, a cat attacking your bait, it's action. So this is uh, this is really uh, going to be a fun couple days here. Hopefully the cat will come back this evening. And uh, like Stoffel said, we'll uh, we'll come back and build this blind and stake out this cat. If he comes during the day, uh, that's a bonus. But if not, we'll be ready for him at night. And uh, if he's a good cat, like we think he is, looks like a big male, then uh, we'll we'll take our best shot and uh, see if we can't uh, bring him back to camp. Yeah. Well, you would be shooting there. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I had to take two shots off. This, the first one was good. Yeah, they're, the second one was good. They're tough, man. Definitely tough little guy. Yeah. Good as, yeah. Stoffel, you're the PH, man. Appreciate it again. Pleasure, man. Yeah. That's a nice, We're just adding uh, to the collection nice here. Yeah. So, cool. So, uh, he might be uh, helping us out a little bit later. Oh, we're definitely going to use these carcass for bite that. Yeah. We're on day three, and the objective today is we're going to check our lion bait up here on the south, and then we're going to check our leopard bait up north, and hopefully we're going to be sitting on a leopard sometime today or this afternoon. And uh, one of the two big kills we uh, were here for, lion and leopard. I can't be more tickled to death to know that uh, we're about to uh, probably see our first leopard face to face and uh, haven't seen a lion yet either. And uh, I think today's the day for leopards. So it's, uh, it's gonna be an exciting day.
Wow, this is good news. Uh, looks like only the uh, vultures, the birds have attacked our uh, our leopard bay here. So after uh, we hunted last night, it, uh, it didn't uh, hit it last night. So it uh, looks good and promising rather because that cat would be here today. It hit it three days in a row and skipped yesterday. Uh, we think he was chasing a female, so they could have been you know, doing something back here, or they were just full, one of the two, or both. Uh, we're going to uh, take care of this bait, make it presentable, and uh, rub some guts around there, kill our scent, and then uh, we'll sit in the blind, eat lunch, and we'll see what happens. So on the second night that we sat in the leopard blind, after making it a little bit more comfortable, we wanted to put some mattresses in there because we knew that we were probably going to be there for the night. You know, it was about, I would say, after sitting there for four or five hours, uh, it was about 8.30 and the leopard came in and he didn't just come into the tree. We could hear him all around the blind. Uh, we could hear him climb up the tree, get down. We think there was a female there, uh, but you can't turn the light on at this point. He would go and drink a little bit. And we knew that if we just were patient and waited it out, we would get our opportunity and he would be in the tree feeding after the female had fed. We we're patient, we sat there, and it wasn't but about 20 more minutes and he was back in the tree feeding. I knew that I made a good shot. I saw the leopard fall out of the tree backwards, but at that point, you're still wondering, what if? Well, that leopard is big, and he has a 416 bullet in him. He was, a, you know, I hit him really solid, and uh, looks like he's uh, gone back in the bush a little bit. He'll probably uh, expire, so it's a dangerous, time right now, but we want to be real careful. The trackers and Stoffel, my PH, went into the bush looking for this leopard. They saw where he went in, had no blood trail. That kind of worried me, and I was worried for them. They want to find my cat. <laughs> it's pretty crazy trailing a cat here in the evening in Africa. I think it gives new meaning to a dangerous job. Rod? Yes, sir. Dead cat, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a big cat, buddy. Heck, yeah. Wow. Wow. Oh! I'll never forget the moment that I saw that leopard at my feet. I couldn't imagine having a leopard and a trophy of that magnitude laying at my feet. It was a dream that had come true for me. His teeth just massive. Wow. I mean, if you were just to pick this cat up. Oh. 
look at this big baby. <laughs> That's a good cat right there. Well, Stoffel, thanks to you, man. That's uh, that's this is a great trophy. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks to uh, you know McDonald Safari and and you as a PH, uh, the Savy uh, Game Park, and of course uh, couldn't have done it without Aaron Nilsson and Safari Outfitters for a actually arranging this hunt for me. Yeah. Uh, Aaron was here about a month ago and killed his lion. Yeah. Exactly. I was talking to him on the phone and. And he was telling me about it, and I told him that what my dream was to kill two cats. And he said, "Well, I've got the place for you." And you know, a couple months later, here I am. Excellent, so, man. thanks to all you guys uh, for making this happen. Well, what's the plan, man? If you've had the benefit of uh, watching this adventure, you've uh, probably realized that uh, there's a bit of a routine here, and and that routine is you're constantly feeding these large cats to get them on a pattern. And once you do have them on a pattern, they're feeding at one of your bait stations, then you're looking for a blind. And uh, if you don't have that opportunity, it's a continuous, basically, routine job of finding bait, putting bait uh, at your stands, checking the stands for uh, any tracks or activities. So right now we don't have uh, a definite or a good spot to hunt a lion, and we've already gotten a leopard, so we uh, we were just going to continue on, go to the next uh, lion bait stand, and until we uh, find something to hunt. Do you see a lot of them? Another one. What'd you do today? Well, I played Skip the Rock with the Hippo. Well, managed to uh, get us a little kudu cow for some bait and, uh, you know, just practicing uh, the stewardship of game management. You must always uh, harvest the cows as well as the bulls uh, to control the herd. So that's what we're doing.
guitar. Got you, Billina. A little better area, I guess, right here. They're just hanging out in here more often than the other areas. Oh, he's gonna come and get in the truck. Well, we've gotten to our last bait uh, this morning, and it appears that uh, a leopard has, uh, has eaten some on this bait, and uh, the lion and the cubs did not come back. And it looks like this morning with the branches knocked off, uh, the vultures have been in here eating. So we're gonna take this bait down and, uh, and put another one up north. So we'll, uh, we'll see what happens, but we're still waiting for uh, a lion to attack our bait to give us an opportunity to hunt one. We had seen a ton of kudu, but I was dead set and determined to get a 50 inch kudu or bigger. I told my PH Stoffel just to keep me off the trigger until we found a really good trophy. Spotted a kudu out here, a bull, and uh, it looks like a shooter. Probably 52 inches or more, we don't know. We're gonna go check it out. Once we got off the truck and pursued this kudu, he was in heavy, thick brush. We had a couple opportunities, it didn't work out. We finally got our opportunity and we made it happen. Oh yeah. That's an opening. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, I knew I hit him quartering away too. Exactly what we thought. Pretty big old animal here. Yeah. We're talking kudu, man. Wow. He's a monster. The big bruiser we've been looking for. Well, Stoffel, here we are. Thank you. You, uh, you held me off a few of these, you know, till we got what you thought was a trophy, and uh, great trophy, you know. Thanks to uh, to you and to uh, McDonald Safari and Safari Outfitters for arranging this uh, great safari that I've been on, and can't wait to uh, experience the rest of it. Everything's just been so great, you know. It's just a really cool adventure. So, uh, you know, how did it happen, Stoffel? And we were actually on our lunch time. Yeah. We decided we we're gonna need some more bait for another bait. We we ran out of bait and there's some fresh line tracks. So we needed some more bait. We we're actually looking for bait and was trying to go to get a bit of fishing in. <laughs> and it totally turned out different. <laughs> on the side of the mountain we were standing under a tree. We got we got off the vehicle, I sent the vehicle away. Yeah. And I was spotted as he walked moved away but but we caught up to him eventually yeah and he gave him another good shot again yeah it's uh it's just a true testament of what we've done here i mean we've always set out to take care of something yeah. and uh lo and behold something gets in our way so it's always a good thing that gets in our way and uh here we go we've got another kudu uh, 
We uh, had a little interesting altercation last night. Got really close to uh, some dangerous game and uh, you, you've always got to be on guard. So we're sitting here uh, at a bait that we relocated just a couple hundred yards away. We're gonna move this bait to this tree here so we can get it a little higher and uh, try to get a picture of, of what we've got here eating. It looks like we've got a, a, a big male, maybe two big males here eating. Uh, they, they destroyed this kudu last night. You can see the scratches up along the tree. It was 10 foot high, so we, we think we've got a big cat here. And uh, we've got another half a kudu here that we're gonna put right here, like I said. And we'll, uh, we'll see what we've got here uh, as an opportunity. It became a personal challenge of mine to harvest all three of what I call the little critters for my Grand Slam. The graze buck, the steam buck, and the diker. Just kind of waiting for you, Pat. Are you ready? Yeah. Cool. He's a dead one now. Well, we got the first graze buck. Heck yeah. Oh. Pretty old one, huh? I'll tell you what, these are challenging little animals. We've uh, been pretty fortunate to have a burn here to uh, help us get a, uh, <clears throat> a better look on what's moving down below us and having to really use the truck just to see. and. Uh, they're quick, so you gotta size up your trophy pretty quick, make sure it's a shooter, yeah. and execute very fast. Otherwise they're gone. Yeah. You use a shotgun, but your rifle is just 10 times worse. Yeah. Luckily, like I said, we've got a burnt area, so. Well, I don't need a shotgun. I'm a pretty good shot. But anyway, well done. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Excellent trophy there. Absolutely. Well, we're gonna set out a drag here, and as we hunt up to the lion blind, see if we can't uh, attract some lions to it as we're hunting. What I call the little critters, the quick little critters, the diker, the graze buck, and the steam buck. They're not dead. They're gonna be big, but they're gonna tonight. You think they're in here waiting? Yeah, they're gonna kill them. These runs will be there. Going across. That's them? They've come all the way this way. They've covered our whole park, man. They cover a lot of ground, don't they? That's right. Okay. Let's see if this goes through. It's Roy. Yeah. Roy. No. This is Brian with Save the Rhino Foundation. It's calling for Rory to see if you guys could come over here and save these rhinos from the poachers. The rhinos on the fence. We saw they caught a pass at the gate. She went in. She wants to go back to the fence. I think she's walking down the fence now. All right, thanks. Okay, what? But you will get all of the rangers. And was that Alex? Yeah, he's on the way to the. Luckily, on the way to the skinning shed to the where the rangers and stuff are. So oh, cool. They'll get all of them. Yeah. Out the immediate. Okay, good. All right. 
Save the Rhino Foundation will score oh, big. Done something good today. Yep. So far. Yep. Like this. Right, but I don't, you, that's reason. I don't look at the arrow, I look at the bow. That's yeah. just my eyes. Right. Right. And my body has to come to it. But I'm just saying, when you're aiming or when you're looking at your bow, you're shooting over. Well, we got a beautiful morning here. Uh, what do you what do you want to do today? Well, we're gonna run, do the bait run. Yep. Go down south, check all the. A bait, bait, another bait run, huh? Yeah. <laughs> 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 you're kind of doing that every day, so yeah. I'm, uh, I'm with you. And then if there's something good on bait, we'll check that out. Yeah. And then we'll take it from there. We do, I'll definitely need some more bait. Yeah. We'll try and get a bite At least we down. do down south. Yeah. Where those lines are feeding. Yeah, we've still got enough for the line. Okay. I'll put it in on the uh, lunch time. Yeah, that one is about almost close to 40. 40. Another trophy that I wanted to pursue and that Mozambique is known for, especially the Sabi Game Park, is the Cape Buffalo. I used my bow and arrow to stalk a Cape Buffalo a few times because I thought it was so easy. It looked like a cow, but unbelievable sense of smell that a Cape Buffalo possesses. Buffalo decided to do exactly what we were not thinking. That's hunting. You never know what these animals are going to do. That's uh, that's just part of hunting, especially bow hunting. And if if it was easy, you know, it wouldn't be that much fun. So we uh, we're always uh, coming back for another stock. There were so many Cape Buffalo around, it, it just seemed so easy. But it was not easy by any stretch of the means. Gosh, are there a lot of Cape Buffalo here. Was there just a huge herd of 400 or what? Well, we've come across, across a couple of dead rhino carcasses yeah. all over the reserves, you've seen them. Yeah. That's just another one we found now. That black rhino? Uh, yeah, right there, the river. Yeah. And just down from there, about maybe half a mile, there's another two white rhinos that's been poached mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Ach, and we've seen these carcasses lying all over the reserve. This is just another one. So you were saying that the shooter gets, you know, a certain amount of money, then yeah. the, the middleman and then the, the end seller. That goes about three processes. Yeah. The shooter, then a guy who organizes the shooting. Mm -hmm. After that, another process. And sometimes up to four times before it gets to the end buyer. Mm -hmm. Quite a bit of money. Mm -hmm.
you know, one of the animals that are one of the most challenging animals that most would probably think is very easy is the crocodile. All right, man. We've got the crocodile lying down the rocks. Where we spotted it yesterday. Spotted him yesterday. Sneak in there and see if we can get a good shot. He's big enough. Yeah. He looked all right yesterday. We had a good look at him tonight. We decided to get a good shot and take it. You think this one might be a different one from yesterday? It Maybe bigger? different, yeah. Okay. From the way we saw him there at the bottom now, it yeah. looks different. All right. Well, we're going to check him out. After we located this crocodile in a pool of water by himself, we made our first stalk. <laughs> It, it, it was it was it was a challenge. He slithered away and left us sitting there thinking, "What just happened?" On the second attempt at stalking this crocodile, we made a craftier plan. We're back to get our crocodile. So we see him sit down there, exactly where he was yesterday. We're gonna come here with a little more stealthy approach. and everything just worked out. We had the wind right. We didn't have any sound for him to hear us. We weren't making any noise. We were able to pursue him in the sand versus going through the bush. So our noise was kept at a minimum and we really kept lower and slithered through the sand with a much stealthier approach. Well, it was worth waiting. It was worth waiting. I mean, he didn't even get in the water, man. That just, boom, pounced him. After we shot this crocodile, it couldn't have been a better shot. It was textbook perfect. I shot this crocodile and wow. hit him right on top of the head and the brain, and it was an unbelievable shot. Well, we finally got our croc. Yeah, I know we've got him. Yeah. Well done, Brian. Yeah, thanks, man. That, uh, you know, took a little uh, little effort, but it wouldn't be, uh, you know, a trophy if it, if it didn't take the effort. Well, we spotted him the first day, he got away from us completely. We didn't have a, even a good look at him. Mm -hmm. The second day, we had him in the scope, but he was just too fast. Yep. And today, he gave you a nice shot. Yeah, they're quite the, the sneaky animal. They, yeah. uh, you, they're hard to be fooled. Yeah, they very, very sensitive to any movement, any sound, smell. We had everything going for us, right? We had a better stalk. Uh, we had the wind in our favor. The, wind was good today. Well, the only thing we didn't have was that hippo quiet, but. Yeah, the hippo was, was out of all. I thought it was gone. Yeah. Luckily it wasn't, so. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I had a great rest at the end, and so I got a great shot. And, uh, you know, the great thing was he didn't even get in the water. Yeah, no, that's a good one. He was just, he didn't even move into the <laughs> His tail was a bit of uh, flicking a little bit. Yeah. But that's normal, but he didn't move one inch forward or backwards, he just laid there. Made, the, made y'all's job a little easier. Yeah. You know, Kip Moore, thank you, buddy. Phineas, thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. Well, I appreciate your guidance. Folks, you know, at Sabi Game Park, they are known for their huge leopards and big lions. But something that they're also known for is their kudu and water buck. And those two trophies were on my list, but I wanted to be real patient. And I wanted to get the best kudu that I could possibly get 
and I wanted to get the best water buck that I could get. We got out, pursued him, and really didn't even have a good idea where he was. <laughs> About time, man. Finally. Gosh. All right, here he comes. Here he comes. Above and beyond the length of his horns being 33 inches, it was just the personal challenge as a hunter that we had hunted this animal for three weeks and we're finally able to get it done. Beast. Wow. Unbelievable. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there. Well, now we get to enjoy all of our hard work. Yeah. It's, uh, it's really open at the end of the day. It did. After a few uh, times, uh, we got what we were after. and looks like one of the biggest we've seen out here. Yeah. It's definitely the biggest one we've seen over the last 21 days. Yeah, yeah and in the county. We were holding out for, for a big buck like this, or a big water buck bull. And, you know, we got what we were after, so appreciate well done, it. Yep. Thank you, Stoffel. I think he's right up here. Yeah, thank you. All right, I think he's right over here. Yeah, right through there. Finally got me a steam buck. Well, well, you got him. Yeah, this completes the grand Finally. slam. Finally, yeah. I, Kudos to you. You've always said, hey, we'll get them. We'll get them. <laughs> you just got to keep after them, and that's what we've been doing. This uh, this completes uh, the three little animals. I've been calling them the little critters, and uh, this was a very uh, sweet moment for me. Yeah. Well done, thank man. You. Good yep. shooting, Davis. Yeah, thank you. You know, in pursuing our line, we hung multiple baits. We drove over 3,300 kilometers. We did everything that we could do. And unfortunately, sometimes things just don't work out and that's why they call it hunting. We're not gonna take a lion home with us on this trip, but I, can know, I know one thing. I feel good about the effort that we gave because we gave 110%. Yeah. There you go, that was good. Thank you, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if it ain't yeah. Thanks. Uh, thanks. Uh, got his old warts here. That's, that is special. I'll tell you what, these guys have evaded us so many times. Yeah. On our last evening, in the last hour, uh, he, he came out of nowhere, and uh, we got it done. It's uh, just a great way to end this uh, safari here in Mozambique. Appreciate all you guys and everything you've done. We've uh, really taken a, a long list uh, of trophies to uh, really portray what, what, what is out here in, in Mozambique, and I couldn't be more happy. Uh, we've uh, we failed to get a buffalo, but we've had several opportunities. The lions just weren't here. They weren't feeding. We worked our tail off, but uh, that's just part of it. I think the burn had something to do with that. But all in all, what a great way to end a, a safari here. And uh, appreciate it, Stoffel. Please go ahead. Yep. My favorite. Yeah. Again. Thank, Thank you. you. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. This is awesome, man.